Greetings out there, regular Hidden Levels viewers. This is the Gamer Guy in a Suit. Here is a guest of Manix, and thank you for having me on the Hidden Levels. I'm excited to bring you a review that Manix sought me out for specifically. It's called Life in Bunker, and he asked me for my opinion on this game as I had it wishlisted, and I may have even talked about it with him, possibly. I ramble on about games on my wishlist all the time. But Life in Bunker, let's take a look, shall we? I've been looking at it for about a week or so now. I've given it a lot of time, waited for some hot fixes to come through to see how much they would improve the game. Quite frankly, I'll tell you right off the bat, what I was looking for was maybe for added depth, but that didn't come. So let's get right to it. Life in Bunker is really an interesting blend of concepts and ideas. Think, um... Sort of like a mix of like Fallout Shelter and Dungeon Keeper and like a little bit of Prison Architect sprinkled on in there. Because you're a warden. You are the warden of this bunker and you need to essentially design and manage this bunker so that all of your little peoples can survive basically 50 turns and then they're going to hopefully come out of the bunker and life will be, you know, grand with whatever population you're going to repopulate the earth with and yada yada yada. There's a story there, really, but quite frankly, what you're here for is this, like, little neat kind of underground sim slash resource management game. So, let's take a look at it. If you like city builders, that kind of thing, you know, you, you know exactly what you're looking for here. So, we get into this game, or at least I did, and I was like, alright, First things first, you got to fire up the incubator and start more people coming out immediately. You got babies coming out. You, you're going to want babies to grow up into, into more humans so that you can expand your civilization so that you can give them all these jobs to do so that you can build more and basically create your little bunker that's going to sustain life. So you start with the basics and make some babies and then take your people that are already there. You may start with like five or six people and assign them some jobs right away. I give a few workers, some janitors to clean up after the workers, and you can get to building right away. And you gotta take care of the basics because all the needs need to be met. You need to make sure you've got your toilets and your kitchens and your showers. So all, all, all your little people are gonna need to eat and sleep and clean themselves and pick up after themselves or at least have the janitors pick up after them. The waste is going to need to go to somewhere. You're going to need to think of all these things. That's why I was talking about like prison architect style type or city builder type. You need to be considering all these things. You, you need to balance your needs of your people and what you need them to be doing at the same time. However, this is where some negatives end up coming into play because see, there isn't much structure here. You can plan, but there's no real benefit to planning at all there's no bonuses for being around certain things or negatives for being around certain things in case you're wondering that means something like um i can build a garbage can right next to the little cooking area the kitchen and there's no problem with that i don't have to really assign beds anywhere just wherever you can fit the beds put the beds they'll go to sleep there it's fine doesn't matter the lighting doesn't matter the noise doesn't matter they're working none of that seems to matter at all now, I be, may be mistaken, or maybe that's something that will about to be, you know, fixed in the future. I would really hope so. But as it is, it seems like you can just kind of lay anything anywhere. And that just, ugh, it, it struggles to add meaning to what's going on, quite frankly. Uh, one thing that I do like is that there's these little mole men you have to look out for. Now, if you've played games like Civilization or whatnot, think of like Barbarians. They're like that. They can pop out of the floor or out of the ground, I should say, if you haven't created a floor over the ground, and they will attack your people. So hopefully your people can stop them and then fill in the holes, and then the moment can become a problem if you let them get out of hand. So after that brief synopsis, let's take a look at some of these positives. It is a really great concept and idea. I mean, who doesn't want to run a little bunker like this, and who doesn't like designing things, and there's a whole lot of customization going on. And a grand part of that is that the levels really are randomly generated. Each time you start a new game, which I did like six or seven times because I was really, really trying to get into this one, it's different. It's a new map. So every map that you start is new and fresh and different, and it's going to have its own little quirks and challenges, which is fantastic. 
the game itself to play is easy to learn. There's a tutorial there. As long as you take advantage of the tutorial, you don't have to be a master of city building games or a master of anything like that. You, as long as you walk through the tutorial and pay attention, you can play this game pretty easily out of the box, as it were, and have a lot of fun if this is what you're looking for. Uh, also, which is a big positive in my book, the developer, he has been incredibly active since this game came out, which is kind of why I wanted to space the review a little bit, because at launch, the first couple of times I played it, I was having some issues with bugs, which since have been fixed and addressed, which is great. So active developers is always a two thumbs up. However, let's get to some of the glaring negatives, I should say. As is, $15 is way too much for this game because it's too shallow. It's too short. It's too shallow. Um, you can look at the review. There's a lot of other reviews. Most people have fired up the game, gone through the tutorial, learned all the quirks of the game, and beaten the game all in under six to eight hours. For $15, that's a little rough. I'm thinking this should be more in like the $5 range. Uh, there's still some small buggy stuff that is being worked out again by the awesome active developer. But I mean, there's like a power slash water supply bug that I was still having as of the recording of the video that is, you know, overlaid here. That I, for some reason, no matter how much power or water you have going to it or how much you have generated, every once in a while it's almost like you need to power cycle to get the power to kick on or whatever or the water to kick on. And I mean... Literally, I've had to quit the game, save the game, quit the game, and then reopen the game, and then the power's fine. So that, that's been an issue with me occasionally. And again, another negative for me is there's no real interaction between the objects. Uh, I would really like to see there be more strategy involved. I don't want to have to be able to, or not have to, but be able to place beds wherever I want. I don't want to place a bed next to a reactor. That's insane to me. I want there to be like a reason to build rooms, to put all the living quarters together. To put a, The kitchen and the table seem to work in concert with each other. I do believe there is a, a something there, as the table has to be close enough to the kitchen for it to be effective or something like that. But other than that, for the most part, there, there needs to be more interaction between the objects to me. Uh, all in all, it, I was kind of disappointed, maybe because I was looking forward so much to this title, but I, I just, I couldn't, I tried six or seven times to get into this game and it just wasn't there. I could give it that solid recommendation if it were still an early access game or something like that, but I don't think it is. It's a completed game, this is, this is it. Aside from some, you know, patches and some hot fixes and whatnot, the depth just is not there. And I, was, I wish it was deeper. I wish it was longer. And I feel like I'm not the only one. Uh, three out of ten for me. And I would suggest if you wait for a good sale and it comes down to that $5 range, maybe pick it up and you'll enjoy it. Especially if you're a fan of these types of games, like a Dungeon Keeper type or a Sim City type or something like that. I really like to thank Manic and the rest of the Hidden Levels team for having me here today. Uh, this has been a really, really, really fun thing for me to do. I hope I get a chance to do it again sometime. You are all some lovely, fantastic people. Uh, hopefully next time we'll bring another better game. Thank you again for having me, and I hope you all take care. Happy gaming.